Today, buy now, pay later is one of the most convenient ways to pay, especially if you talk about amongst the Gen Z and the millennials. So it becomes fairly easy for them where they don't need to have a personal loan or a credit card. But what you need to be really, really conscious about that at the end of the day, it is a credit product. It is a kind of a loan. And if you accumulate it, you know, uh, and, and it, there's an unsurmounted uh, amount that, that you owe, eventually it is not good for your financial well-being. Buy now, pay later has become a symbol of adaptable financing, yet it's vital for individuals to engage with it thoughtfully. Although it offers convenience, what potential challenges should one be aware of and what strategies can be employed to safeguard one's financial tomorrow? I'm Rashan Gidwani and joining us today is Nitin Mathur, Strategic Account Director at Experian. Hi Nitin, welcome to the show, how are you? Fantastic. Thank you for having me, Roshan. Absolutely. You're welcome. Nitin, what factors do you believe contribute to the widespread popularity of buy now, pay later? Buy now, pay later is not a new phenomenon, right? It has existed maybe not in the current form, but it has been there for a while now. But what has really catapulted this into this huge thing in the last uh, you know, couple of years is if I have to pick uh, the top three things, I would say the three A's, uh, accessibility, awareness and affordability. Awareness in terms of the fintechs have created a huge ecosystem of merchants, right? So if you go shopping in a brick and mortar store, where you're just on the billing counter, right? On the kiosk, you see a QR code of a buy now, pay later player. So it creates a massive awareness. Whether you go on an online e-commerce platform, you go on the checkout, there is an option to be buy now, pay later. A huge awareness has been created and that's largely because of the whole ecosystem of the merchants and which is increasing every day. The second is the accessibility. You see for traditional credit products like a credit card or personal loan to go through a application process, it could go on a background checks, there'll be credit checks, your credit bureau will be pulled. But largely for buy now, pay later, although they do have their algorithm, but you override all of that process. It's at the moment, at the point of sale. So it's it's accessible. Affordable, if you pay, let's say, a purchase today by a credit card, you get a 15 to 45 days of interest-free period. But after that, if you miss that, huge interest freeze and late fees uh, will be levied. Whereas on a buy now, pay later, you usually pay interest-free. So there's no interest. Although if you miss your payment, there is late fee. So there's a lot of affordability vis-a-vis -vis other traditional credit products with the buy now, pay later. On the other driving factors, the way I see it, something that has really catapulted buy now, pay later is the e-commerce boom. You know, it is predicted that by 2027, uh, Singapore alone will contribute to up $14 billion of e-commerce transactions. So that's a, that's a massive, massive amount, right? And for people are looking for newer alternatives to pay to fulfill this demand. Pandemic also was a was a great catalyst uh, when people were just working from home. You know, they thought, okay, let's upgrade, let's get a bigger television. So pandemic was a big, big push for buy now, pay later. I would also think that the recent interest rate hikes and inflation also tend to propel these further. Let's say, you know, you want to safeguard on your savings, right? So even for your usual expenses like groceries or you know bills, you'd like to defer your payments and buy now pay later comes in very handy. I use it all the time. I think all of these reasons together has pushed this forward uh, and, and fintechs have played a key role uh, in creating this momentum. You touched on it briefly just now, but in what ways does the convenience of buy now pay later influence shopper behavior and shape their choices when making purchases? The way I see it today, buy now pay later is one of the most convenient ways to pay especially if you talk about amongst the Gen Z and the millennials. And if you're seeing globally, the reason buy now, pay later as a standalone product is, is, very, is very popular is because it's largely catered towards the new to credit population. People who are not there, what we call in bureau language or, or in bureau parlance is NTC. It's new to credit when you don't have any formal lending as of yet. So this becomes your first legitimate credit product. So it caters to a new to credit option. So so it could be, you know, uh, graduates have just uh, graduated, got their first job, they want to buy a new laptop, an iPhone. So it becomes fairly easy for them where they don't need to have a personal loan or a credit card. It can be there, they can do all of the shopping without having a credit card. In the first place, you're buying something that you would that you would not have otherwise buy if you'd not have saved for it. So you're not 
basically saving and just buying it outrightly. The other thing is that it could lead to, you know, you end up buying more because, you know, it's very easy when you have to split your, uh, split your payments. So in, in that sense, all of these factors drive your shopping behavior. In Singapore context, I can say that it is not just a Gen Z and millennial thing, right? I see Gen X people, even baby boomers using buy now, pay later a lot. So, so the only thing you need to be wary of that you don't accumulate a lot of debt uh, while going on a shopping spree. Does the allure of immediate gratification impact our ability to achieve long-term financial objectives? What strategies can consumers adopt to balance immediate purchases with future financial stability? There is an inherent aspiration in everyone to have a very glossy lifestyle. You, you go on Instagram and you scroll, and you see all these lifestyle bloggers going on vacations, having these fancy things. And I think a lot of people uh, want that. And it's very easy to kind of go down that path where you seek validation through these material things. I think what one should really focus on should be your physical and mental well-being. I think everyone should kind of understand that, uh, you know, you should focus more on what, what enhances your quality of life rather than these materialistic pleasure. And I think, if pandemic has taught us something, is that you should always save for a rainy day. Could be a job loss, which is pretty much playing out as we speak because of all the geopolitical tension and post COVID. So, you know, you should have a decent amount of corpus for a rainy day. We have seen what has transpired in the last three years, you know, rather than just going on a shopping spree and using all of these. While these products give you the flexibility, they give you the right kind of leverage, but it also comes with a certain risk which you need to be wary of. So how can consumers responsibly and mindfully use buy now, pay later services, avoiding overspending and recognizing potential warning signs? I've devised my own certain techniques that I, I can share, uh, which I use because I shop online a lot and I use buy now, pay later a lot. Never shop during the nighttime. You are the most vulnerable. That's when you've eaten, you know, well, mindful during the day, but you crave desserts at the nighttime. You're most vulnerable, so never shop during the night time or scroll your social media or e-commerce in the night time. Secondly, when you're making a buying decision, just leave it out. And I'm talking more on e-commerce, right? Just, just wait it out. You add in your cart and then you forget. What I personally do is, if, it, if it's a lesser transaction value, I leave it up to 24 to 48 hours. If it's a higher a transaction or of a, of, a bigger, of a bigger transaction, I would wait it out for at least a week or two weeks. What it does is that half of the time, you may not end up buying that because you'll realize you, that you don't need it proper, perhaps. So impulsive shopping is something that you need to restrict, right? You need to be really mindful, as we said, of what you're buying, essentially. And these are just some tips that I use, unsubscribe from mailing list, right? Because they will nudge you, send you new offers, just unsubscribe. Use an expense tracking app. There are not a lot of these budget tracking and expense tracking apps. Just download, use, record all your transactions because what it does is, it is known evidence that if you see anything graphically registered, so when you see where your money is actually going, you'll be mindful for your next purchase. So use an expense tracking app. So these are some of the ways that can help you being mindful uh, and, and stay on your, your financial well-being path. Let's wrap it up, Nitin. What key tips do you have for consumers seeking to navigate buy now, pay later while safeguarding their financial future? What buy now, pay later has done amazingly well is that it has kind of very seamlessly blurred the lines between a payment instrument versus a borrower. But what you need to be really, really conscious about that at the end of the day, it is a credit product. It is a kind of a loan. And if you accumulate it, you know, uh, and, and it, there's an unsurmounted uh, amount that, that you owe, eventually it is not good for your financial well-being. You will be paying late fees on that. So just be very mindful before using it. As I said, being conscious of your buying decision is very important. At the end of the day, knowing that this is not a checkout option, this is not just a payment option, this is a credit underlying product. Thankfully, we are we're in, an, uh, in a place where the regulators are very forward looking and they do do a lot about interest protection. In fact, last year, uh, the Singapore FinTech Association under the guidance of MAS created a buy now, pay later code of conduct, which protect the consumer interest, right? Uh, one of them is where Experian is involved is that they created this agency where all of these buy now, pay later agencies will report their data to Experian as an independent agency and there is some hardship assistance as well. So all the buy now, pay later players have to have a kind of a hardship assistance at the time when the customers are facing defaults or they're not able to pay. As a consumer, 
um, as I said before, we just need to be mindful of our purchase decisions. Nitin, you've really thought about this. You've really brought on great philosophy today. And I think to sum it up, there really are repercussions with regards to money, spending money, and you've kind of devised like a financial diet of your own, if I must say, and that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. No, thank Chat you again. for having me, pleasure. By practicing mindful buy now, pay later usage, consumers safeguard their finances. Through self-awareness, budgeting, and responsible decisions, they balance convenience with long-term security. You've been watching Tea Time Tuesday. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge and financial empowerment.